Hey everyone, my name's Jordan. I'm the developer of Stipple Effect. You might have seen one of my previous posts. I'm just here today to show you guys some of the workflows that my program, I think, facilitates and makes a lot easier that I think, some of which I think are genuinely game changing. So let's get right into it. Okay, so imagine that we have this texture template, right? So it consists of the front of a face, the sides, the ear, the back, and then back corners. This is for an eight directional, uh, for eight directional sprites, right? And imagine that we use a single texture to generate all of those directions. And they consist of two separate components, the actual base head, and then the eyebrows, which are superimposed on top of the base head to indicate some sort of expression, right? And so imagine that the only textures that we actually import into our game engine or wherever else is that one texture and then we actually animate those sprites via an algorithm at runtime um, and so if we're actually modifying our texture it would still be nice to see what that would look like in game without having to actually um, you know re-import our asset and then recompile the game just to preview it it would be nice to see that live as we're actually making changes right and so the way that i do that in Stipple effect is via preview scripts. So you can see me here just sort of um, single selecting layers that correspond to different basketball players. So we've got Luka Doncic, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Steph Curry, and LeBron James here. And as I select each layer, you can see that the preview that's generated dynamically on the right changes. And even if I were to draw like on top of this, um, if I just like drew a red streak across Lucas' face, then it would immediately dynamically be previewed, right? So this way we can modify our textures and then see what they would look like in game immediately. And the script that actually makes this possible is right here. So relatively simple. And also there's little to no boilerplate. This literally defines a header function that takes the texture, the single image texture as input, and then it's supposed to return an array of images that correspond to our animated um, uh, texture that consists of the head just spinning, right? And basically all it does is it uses two intermediate lookup textures, basically a, a texture mapping, like a UV mapping. This one corresponding to the shape of our initial texture, where every non-transparent pixel has a unique color, and then an animation texture, which consists of the eight directions um, now animated where the colors in this image uh, correspond to coordinates in this initial texture. So it uses these three textures, the input texture that it takes from, oh, sorry, the input texture that it takes from directly within stipple effect, um, and then the two intermediate textures to produce, um, to produce this uh, output texture that then gets cut into the separate directions and separate frames. And then the eyebrows are superimposed on top um, via a different lookup texture. So basically the um, these coordinates up here correspond to the eyebrows and those are animated via separate animation textures, which are then superimposed on top of the um, heads, the head textures in different directions. And so yeah, the script again is relatively simple most of this is literally just defining constants um and yeah you can write this in like five minutes and then use it for hours or use it for weeks or however long you intend on developing this project and a cool thing that you can do in step effect as well is that you can actually re-import animated previews back into the program so if i press this button here then that preview is now a project in and of itself and let's say that um, for certain players or for certain use cases, you actually do want proper sprite sheets rather than um, rather than defining sprites from the texture. You actually do want certain sprite sheets for certain situations. Um, you can use the re-import feature and then use the stitching feature. So when you have a project that consists of multiple frames, you can stitch the frames together in a certain configuration. Um, let's go eight because it's eight directions and then so this axis is for the directions and then this axis is for the expression um and then you've got a sprite sheet just like that right 
Also, you can define the size of the pixel grid in the program, toggle the pixel grid, and then you can actually snap your um, selections to the pixel grid. That way you get some sort of like tiling behaviors. Um, yeah, and you can automate this as well. So if you, if you want to, for example, for these four superstar players, right? Because uh, let's say that superstar players in this hypothetical basketball game have their own sprite sheets imported rather than being rather than having their sprites um, animated from a texture right uh, and I can show you a, a, a actual legitimate use case for that so based on how I've defined our, my intermediate textures here there is a bit of an issue with Giannis Antetokounmpo's texture because his head shape is slightly different to the rest of the players where he is missing these pixels here and it ends up rendering somewhat awkwardly for certain sprites of certain directions so if you look at those side sprites there you can see that those pixels that pixel should perhaps be filled in or i could just define my um algorithm differently so what you could do here is you could again re-import it um configure it the same way And then I could either like, you know, manually get rid of that pixel or fill the pixel above it in or whatever else and then use that as a sprite sheet. Um, and if I were to do this for like several players, this would get quite tedious, right? Like having to stitch them together and make sure that I define the one axis as eight sprites or as eight frames per one axis and um, five by the other because the default would be 40 because there's 40 frames in the animation. So what I could do instead is I can actually automate that via script as well. So again, there's three use cases for scripts. One is for previews, one is for color transformations, which I'll show off later, and another is for actually automating program actions. Um, so again, if I animate Steph Curry here and re-import him, rather than going to the actual split menu and then configuring my operation, what I can do is I can just write a script, which I conveniently have already written, to configure sprite sheets. Literally just a one-liner. I could just as easily just type the A directly in here rather than defining it as a constant. Um, but yeah, so this call here gets the current project and then performs a stitch operation um, that takes this many frames in the, in the um, primary um, axis and then this is just the, the axis determiner. So true is for horizontal and false would be for vertical, right? So running that script, configure spreadsheet, does that automatically. And so that way I could far more easily um, configure all my spreadsheets for all the players here. So if I quickly just import them all, LeBron, Giannis, get rid of that initial texture. Now I've just got the four players, right? Let me undo what I did to Steph Curry here. So I've got basically the same thing where I've got these 40 frame animations of all four players now, right? What I could do is I could modify my scripts to actually perform the same operation on every project. So I'll just quickly write that modify script now. Configure spreadsheet. Now one, two, three, four. All configured automatically. There you go. Another example. Imagine that you're making a resource pack for Minecraft or making a game of your own that has similar mechanics and ideas, right? So for any block that you, for any block texture that you design, you want to be able to preview whether that block tessellates correctly, whether you know you can tile it and it looks seamless and what it looks like when it breaks. So you can write an animation script to preview those things dynamically, where you have a three by three block grid and the middle block is being broken. And then you can even, you know, like preview that in a ping pong animation or you can loop it or whatever, right? Um, and that would use obviously a breaking animation that's overlaid on top of the block. And the script 
that produces this looks something like this. Again, quite simple. Just defining the actual break animation with the block underneath it. Um, defining a common element of eight tiles, excluding the middle tile, and then animating it with the separate middle tile for each frame, and then returning a list of frames. Again, you can probably simplify the script even beyond this, right? So it's, it's very easy and you can get a lot of use out of this. So like, let's, say, let's say we actually wanted to produce this brick texture, right, from scratch. I'll just show a few things that you can do a simple effect that would make this very, very, very simple. Um, I've got my palette here. So again, right, dynamic previews. As soon as I change something, the preview changes. Let me just fill that. And I want, yeah, I want blocks. I want individual bricks that are eight by four pixels in a 16 by 16 texture. So I know that these should also tessellate four by four. So I'm gonna actually select a four by four area. I'm oh, sorry, no, not four by four, eight by eight. Eight by eight. Wish this isn't, that's nine by nine. Brilliant. Eight by eight and hit control B, which actually sets my pixel grid to those bounds, okay? Um, then I'm gonna select my Accent color, use the line tool to just draw lines across the bottom here. Place one here and then place one here. Okay. Now I can select this, copy it over, and I know that that should already tessellate perfectly, right? Um, then I would like to add a highlight to the top left corner or the top right corner of each brick. So I'm going to just use the wand tool to select the bricks themselves and then use the outline tool to define a, an interior outline on the top and the right and then just cancel the bottom. Boom, I should select those pixels exactly. Select my highlight color, fill it. Now this should produce a bit of an issue because these pixels here should not be highlighted because it's not actually the edge of the brick, but that's an easy fix. Now if I look at my preview, good to go, right? Now I want all of the pixels besides the highlight to have some sort of scatter where the color should deviate from the colors that I've that are the color should deviate a little bit, basically, right? So let me just compound a compound one selection, select those pixels, and then select the script brush tool. This is the third use case for scripts, is a color replacement. Select the scatter script and just brush over those. Look at that. If I want more of a scatter, I can literally just do it again. Even more. That's a bit too much, so let me just undo those two operations. And there you go, that's my final result. Just to show you what that scatter script actually looks like and what it does, very simple. The header function is literally just one line where it takes an input color uh, and then creates a new color from its RGBA coordinates where it scatters the red, the green, and the blue components of the input color and returns the opacity of the original color as it was, the input color as it was, right? And the scatter function, all it does is it it um, randomizes the value slightly. So it takes my input value, so that's that's the RGB color channel values at input, um, and multiplies it by a randomized range from 0 0.9 to 1.1, and then clamps it by 0 and 255, our min and max values, and then returns that, and then the result is some sort of scattered color. So, yeah. A couple of examples of what you can do with scripting there. Um, the scripting language is actually original. I designed it myself to make it as easy to learn, easy to write, fun to write, concise, but still type safe as possible. And so I've just released a VS Code extension that provides syntax highlighting to make it easier to actually write the code so you can actually see, you know, those separate tokens um, separated properly. Um, and that extension, like I said, is on the VS Code marketplace. You can find it by searching Delta Script for Stipple Effect. 
Um, also, the language is fully documented on GitHub and the scripting API is fully documented as well. I really believe in this workflow. I think that this could be a game changer for 2D game development, like I said. And so I'm committed to improving this product and also um, making its ecosystem as rich as possible. So yeah, please let me know what you think and enjoy.